I know a retired dentist who only paints mountains, but the masters seldom care that much who sketch them in beyond a holy face or a highly dangerous chair, while a normal eye perceives them as a wall between worse and better, like a child scolded in France who wishes he were crying on the Italian side of the Alps. Caesar does not rejoice when high ground makes a darker map, nor does Madame. Why should they? A serious being cries out for a gap. And it is curious how often in steep places you meet someone short who frowns, a type you catch beheading daisies with a stick. Small crooks flourish in big towns, but perfect monsters, remember Dracula, are bred on crags in castles. Those unsmiling parties clumping off at dawn in the gear of their mystery for points up are a bit alarming. They have the balance, nerve, and habit of the spiritual. But what god does their order serve? A civil man is a citizen. Am I to see in the Lake District then another bourgeois invention like the piano? Well, I won't. How can I, when I wish I stood now on a platform at Penrith, Zurich, or any junction at which you leave the express for a local that swerves off soon into a cutting? Soon tunnels begin, red farms disappear, hedges turn to walls, cows become sheep, you smell peat or pine wood, you hear your first waterfall. And what looked like a wall turns out to be a world with measurements of its own and the style of gossip. To manage the flesh when angels of ice and stone stand over her day and night, who make it so plain they detest any kind of growth, does not encourage euphemisms for the effort. Here, wayside crucifixes bear witness to a physical outrage, and serenades, too, stick to bare fact. Oh, my girl has a goiter. I've a hole in my shoe. Dower, still a fine refuge. The boy behind his goats has the round skull of a clan that fled with bronze before a tougher metal. And the quiet old gentleman with a cheap room at the Black Eagle used to own three papers, but is not received in society now. These farms can always see a panting government coming. I'm Nordic myself, but even so, I'd much rather stay where the nearest person who could have me hung is some ridges away. To be sitting in privacy, like a cat on the warm roof of a loft, where the high-spirited sun of some gloomy town comes sprinting down through a green croft, bright with flowers, laid out in exquisite splodges like a Chinese poem, while, near enough, a real darling is cooking a delicious lunch, would keep me happy for what? Five minutes? For an uncat-like creature who has gone wrong, five minutes on even the nicest mountain is awfully long.